Hi, I'm Scott. Welcome back to Canard Boulevard. And today we're going to be talking more about Mosaic and the confusion that's arisen over condition inspections on experimental aircraft, in part created by the EAA. And I'm going to tell you why I think the EAA has got it wrong. Coming up. So I apologize, no flying in this video. This is entirely going to be talking about Mosaic, which is the new regulations that FAA has spent, I think, almost a decade working on and was announced at Oshkosh this summer, went into effect on October 22nd. So it's been in effect for a little less than a month. Now, there were quite a few changes to LSRM and LSRI. What are those? Light Sport Repairman Maintenance and Light Sport Repairman Inspection. Those are two certificates that have been around for quite some time, but not very well used. When I say not popular, in total, there's 141 certificated LSRM holders and only 11 certificated LSRI holders. So it wasn't exactly a huge success, but Mosaic is about to change all of that because Mosaic extends the ability of LSRM and LSRI to be able to do condition inspections on EAB or experimental amateur built aircraft. I did an entire video on this that I'm gonna put up here that describes a lot more detail about how this came about and what you have to do. However, some of the information in that video has turned out to be inaccurate simply because Mosaic had just been brought out and some of the interpretations were not entirely solidified yet. So I'm gonna talk about those differences and how we're looking at it today. A very, very quick overview. If you have an EAB or an experimental amateur built aircraft and you built more than 51% of that aircraft, then you are eligible for a repairman certificate, which means that you can do the, the condition inspection, the annual CI on that aircraft, which is the EAB equivalent of your annual inspection that you would do on a certificated aircraft. That repairman certificate is good only for that one aircraft and it will actually list the aircraft on the certificate itself. It does not give you privileges on any other aircraft. The thought being that if you built the aircraft, you have enough knowledge to safely inspect the aircraft, which obviously makes sense. If you do not have a repairman certificate, then you have to have an A&P do the inspection or the annual inspection, the annual condition inspection on your EAB. The AMP does not have to be an IA, which is the inspection authority that is required to do a, an annual inspection on a certificated aircraft. As long, any AMP can sign off on a CI for an EAB. How's that for a bunch of acronyms? So with LSRM, you get the new abilities that you can now do a sign off of a condition inspection of any EAB. And if you have an LSRI, you can do the sign off of a condition inspection of an EAB that you personally own. Now the term own, there's a little bit of inconsistency there. When you say own, does that mean that it's an aircraft that is in your name or can you be the owner of an LLC and the aircraft's in the LLC name? Some people have said that if it is an LLC, then you cannot use it an LSRI to do the CI because you are not the owner of the aircraft, the LLC is. Some people are saying, well, yeah, but you are the owner of the LLC, so it's still fine. The FAA needs to issue a clarification on that. Until then, if you are intending to do an LSRI and you are intending to do use it to do a CI on your own personally owned EAB, and the EAB is actually titled in the name of an LLC, you might want to talk to an aviation attorney first just to make sure that it's legal for you to do so. All right, so how do you actually get this? In my previous video, I said you take the LSRI course certificate and you take that to your local FISDO and they would issue you a repairman certificate for your aircraft, just as if you had actually built the aircraft yourself. That is the guidance that was originally given out by EAA that's wrong. The only way to get a repairman certificate is to actually build the aircraft or 51% of the aircraft yourself. As an LSRI, you will not be getting repairman certificate. What you do have to do is take the course, and I'm actually taking that LSRI course next week, so I'll have a, another video on that. You take that course, you pass the course, you take your course completion certificate, you take it to your FISDO, they will issue you the LSRI certificate. So you now have the S LSRI certificate, and as I'm about to explain, by virtue of having that certificate, and if you own your EAB, you can now do the CI 
on your EAB because you have an LSRI. You do not need a repairment certificate. So let's have a look at some of the actual text from the Mosaic document. It is a 717 page document and I've read through quite a bit of it. If you start looking at page 430, it says specifically CFR 65107C will allow a light sport repairman with an inspection rating to perform the annual condition inspection on an EAB aircraft that is owned by the repairman and that is in the same category of aircraft for which the certificate holder was trained. So if you get an LSRI that is for gyroplanes, you cannot do a CI on your Vans RV7. Similarly, if you do your LSRI on fixed wing, you can't do a CI on your rotorway exec. In addition, CFR 65109B will permit a light sport repairman with a maintenance rating to perform the annual condition inspection on an EAB aircraft that is in the same category of aircraft for which the certificate holder was trained. So it's the exact same text, except for the maintenance rating, they are not saying that the aircraft has to be owned by the certificate holder. So what that's in effect saying is that with an LSRM, you can perform the condition inspection on any EAB. It doesn't have to be just your EAB. So now that opens up all the LSRM holders to be able to perform inspections on any experimental aircraft for which they have that category and class uh, LSRM certificate. That's good for all the experimental air aircraft owners because now there's going to be many, many more people who can perform a CI on an aircraft for which you do not personally have a repairman certificate. And we go to the summary of this section. It says, this final rule expands the privileges of the light sport repairman inspection rating in 65109A2 to allow the holder of that certificate and rating to conduct an annual condition inspection on an aircraft owned by that repairman, which has an experimental airworthiness certificate for the purpose of operating EAB aircraft and on which the repairman has completed the, the prescribed training, blah, blah, blah. Furthermore, the FAA adopts the same expansion for those holders of a light sport repairman certificate with a maintenance rating. So that's reinforcing what was said in the previous paragraph. And this is at the very summary at the end of the section. They just want to make it absolutely clear that, hey, LSRI, you can now do that inspection if you own the aircraft LSRM, you can do inspection on any EAB. And of course, that's in addition to being able to do the same things on light sport aircraft. All right, let's get into where the EAA recently is causing confusion. If you have an experimental aircraft, you are familiar or should be familiar with your operating limitations. The operating limitations are a set of limitations that's several pages long that is part of your airworthiness certificate. It's attached to it. If you get ramp checked with your EAB and they're going to ask for your airworthiness certificate, you better have also on hand your operating limitations because that airworthiness certificate is not complete unless you also have the attached operating limitations that go with it. Make sure you have those in the aircraft. So there are a standard set of operating limitations that the FAA publishes and every so often they update them and any aircraft that has been certified since I think 1994 or thereabouts likely has a version of these operating limitations as a part of that airworthiness certificate. Mine is based on that standard. Mine received its certificate in 2004 and this has not changed since. Part 23 of my operating limitations, an experimental aircraft builder certificated as a repairman for this aircraft under 65104 or an appropriately rated FAA certificated mechanic may perform the condition inspection required by these operating limitations. And the previous operating limitations say, hey, it has to have a condition inspection every year. All right, so that basically says that somebody with a repairman certificate, i.e. the builder, or an FAA certi certificated mechanic may perform the condition inspection required by these operating limitations. Okay, that's fairly simple, right? You have to have a condition inspection done every year and it's saying here's who can do it. That's not a problem. Now let's look at what the EAA recently published in an article called New Inspection Privileges for Amateur Built Aircraft May Require New Operating Limitations. And I will put a link to this article down below. One barrier remains for many EAB owners, operating limitations. No matter what the regulation provides, experimental aircraft operating limitations take priority and have force of regulation under 14 CFR 91319I, which is true. 
If it's in the operating limitations, it is the word of God for your airplane. If your operating limitations say that only people named Joe are able to fly your airplane, then that's, that is hard-coded in the regulations. If you, anybody else flies that airplane, you are violating the operating limitations and thereby the airworthiness certificate of your airplane. So it is force of law what is printed in those operating limitations. Most aircraft certificated after, at the latest 1994, have an operating limitation stating the condition inspections may, may only be performed by amateur built repairmen and FAA certified mechanic and in some cases repair stations, which is what I just read you. And then they say, in cases where this operating limitation exists, EAB owners will need to obtain new operating limitations to take advantage of all the LSRI and LSR, LSRM rules. So that sounds kind of scary in that you have to have either a repairman certificate or be an A&P, you know, an actually certificated mechanic, in order to perform the CI. EAA, I think, has got it wrong. If you read this, they actually paraphrased it. They did not put the actual text in here, and here's what the problem is. They said, most certificated aircraft at the latest in 1994 have an operating limitation stating that condition inspections may only be performed by amateur built repairmen or an FAA certificate mechanic. That's not what it says at all. It says, and the words are very specific, an experimental aircraft builder certificated as a repairman or appropriately rated FAA certificate mechanic may perform condition inspection required by these operating limitations. That's not may only perform, it's may perform. And in FAA parlance, if you look into FAA regulations and how they're written, it uses very specific language and it's legal language. And there are two word, two ways they can use this. One is may and one is must. Must is wholly inclusive. If it said an experimental aircraft builder repairman certificate or an appropriate related FAA mechanic must perform the condition inspection, that means no one else can ever do an inspection on this aircraft. It is only this or that, that is the must. However, because it says may, it means this person or this person are people who can do an inspection. It does not say these are the only people who can do an inspection. So by virtue of the fact that the new mosaic regulations have now gone into effect, say that an LSRI can also perform that inspection, it means you do not need to change the operating limitations. The operating limitations say, here are two that can, but it's not an exhaustive list. Now the LSRI says, hey, LSRI is now eligible to do this thing. That means all you need is an LSRI certificate. You can do the CI and not violate your operating limitations. That's my interpretation. I've spoken to several people who are expert in this field and they agree with me that there is no reason to change operating limitations of your experimental aircraft in order to comply with the LS, new LSRI privileges under Mosaic. So I think EAA has done the community a disservice because by writing this article, it set off a firestorm in experimental forums across the internet of all these people who are worried about how are they gonna get their operating limitations changed and hey, my operating limitations say this, is it gonna get changed if I have to do this and what's the time frame gonna be? You don't have to worry about that. If your operating limitations just say may perform in that section 23 just like mine does and pretty much every aircraft in the last 30 years does, then you don't need to worry about it. You're covered with what the LSRI regs say in the new Mosaic regulations. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or corrections to this, please leave them in the comment section below. If you like this kind of video, click like, subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.